Is this manipulation? Am I trying to make my idea their idea? I don't know because there's no halters, there's no whips, there's no ropes. There's no pressure involved here at all. And the second they ask for me to do something, I do it. So I feel this is more of a co-creation. This is more of me offering an idea and them saying, yeah, I'd like to play that game or no thanks. So trailer training can start as simply as this. I've got Zora in a very small loading arena and then Odie's had her head inside the dark trailer sized sea can for about 30 minutes now. Kalia was waiting to get in and see Odie's protecting her space, driving Kalia off, establishing that the dark trailer sized space is the desired place to be. Zora has not asked to come out at all. She's totally happy in there in her little loading arena pen protected from the other horses. So look around your environment. Even if you don't have a trailer, what do you have that you can start setting up these smaller spaces and having, you know, put their hay in there. Um, we've got first cut hay in the feeder, which is really not tasty, so they don't care. But we have some, we have a Timothy round bale in there. So I pulled some forward for Odie to eat. And I've also given Zora some of that Timothy and some alfalfa. So I've set it up so there's something a little more tasty and interesting in the challenging or confining areas and then just left them to it. Again, it's so energetic if I wanted to get Odie to eat out of this dark trailer cave, there's no way she would. But because I don't care and I just leave it, and then it becomes, you know, the good place to be and the place that she's then defending. Do you want to come out now, Zozi? So we'll see if she wants to come out. I doubt it. I doubt she'll be able to get out before someone else gets in, but maybe she hasn't. Do you have enough room here? She's hesitant because these two are right here. Yeah, she's got to come this way. Good girl. So again, understanding what's enough space for you versus enough space for the horse. I had to open it so that she could come this way. She couldn't come out towards them, even though they were uh, 25 feet away because human space is not the same as horse space. Are you going to go in there or am I going to close it up? I'm going to leave it and I'm going to walk away because she's unsure. Now for safety, if she goes in, I'm going to move to close it really quick because I don't want her to get trapped in there by big mama. So someone, someone needs to decide who's going in there before I close it. So wanted to come out for some water. So this is another part of building trust. As soon as Zora signaled me, hey, I was like, okay, try and come out. Now, for Mama, I don't need to close her in there because no one's going to intrude on her space. She's the most dominant one. So I can leave it wide open like that and let her get really comfortable. So again, I'm feeling for the energy and I'm feeling I don't want to close it yet. I feel if I close it right now, she's going to feel a little bit tricked and trapped. So I'm going to leave it for a bit. And now I'm feeling like I'm going to go in there with her. Because again, the more natural we can be around areas of challenge or confinement, the more natural they are. Are you finishing up Zora's dish? 
Yeah, she didn't finish it, did she? So now that I'm in here, I feel like I can close this up or begin to um, if I'm in here with her. So I'm on the inside of this panel showing her that I'm coming in with her. There we go, good mama. Yes, my good mama. Now I'm gonna scratch her belly, which she loves. And the second she asks to leave, I'm gonna let her out. She's like, yes, but how about my belly scratches? We can do that. And this is a challenging area for Mama because she often senses things in these woods and down the barn road. She really doesn't feel safe in this area. And so I'm honoring that. And now I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna see if she wants to come out, but I'm also gonna toss her a little bit more alfalfa. So she's made no move to follow me out, which is great. Shows how happy she is in there. Should I get you some more alfalfa? But you can see by the wrinkle above her eyelids, she's a little bit worried. You know, she's not entirely feeling safe and relaxed in there, but she's sticking with it. Yeah, let me get you some more alfalfa. Mama. And there's a release of gas, which is good. Letting go. <laughs> oh, there's none here for you. Okay. I'm right near the entrance and then what I'll do I'll also pull some of this Timothy down and I'm gonna put it inside the trailer here and we're gonna see what she thinks of that now that mom is separated from her she's fine she's so alert but she also knows that big mama can't get to her out here yeah right mama but you're a little bit unsure, hey? Did something give you? And then when mama comes over here, Kalia moves away. So we've set up a little bit of a competition here, right? Because mama can see that Kalia has quite a bit of nice hay there. And so she's wondering whether she's got the best spot or whether Kalia does. And again, this kind of tension and negotiating is all positive because instead of being just, you know, there's a value to being totally relaxed in a confined challenging area. And there's a value to being a little challenged. And it's ideal if the challenge comes from the other horse, not from the human, because then there's no anxiety or lack of safety associated with the human or the human's desires or what the human's trying to make happen, it becomes a horse to horse issue and allows them to build resilience. And I've seen the horses do this to each other. Like they want to help each other uh, become more skilled. And so they will put pressure on each other for the purpose of building resilience, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Zosie's all the way over there, <laughs> staying out, smart girl. And now that I'm in here with Mama, she settled right back down. So again, just take a look around your environment. These arena panels are brilliant. They, if you get them from a wholesaler, you can get them from 75. Sometimes you can get the really little ones. 
<clears throat> and the really light ones for 50 bucks each. They are worth every penny. Try to get some secondhand if you can, because you can just come up with all kinds of situations like this that give you a lot of flexibility when you're trying to get your horses used to something that's going to be challenging for them. Ain't that right, Zosie? Yeah, we love our arena panels, don't we? Now, horses in confined situations that are panicking, see this tall arena panel right here? These two here? They can and will climb over them. And that's what Miss Kalia did <laughs> when we tried to bring just her down from the rescue. She climbed over arena panels like this, but I actually had the heavy duty steel ones up there. They were stronger. She climbed over them and she then blew through a three, three wood board solid fence, went through it, through the boards in the middle and she was nine months pregnant. So you can't panic them. You don't want to panic them. You just want to provide what's um, challenging and helps them build resilience, but you do not want to throw them into panic. Mama, should I put more hay in here for you? Let's try more hay before I let you out. So I, I took some Timothy from Kalia's pile and gave it to Mama, and she's happy now and you see how Zora is like well why can't I be a part instead of these being the challenging areas that stressful areas that nobody wants to go near you see how I've set up the dynamics so these become the desired lucky horse areas so now is this manipulation am I trying to make my idea their idea hmm? I don't know because there's no halters, there's no whips, there's no ropes, there's no pressure involved here at all. And the second they ask for me to do something, I do it. So I feel this is more of a co-creation. This is more of me offering an idea and them saying, yeah, I'd like to play that game or no thanks. And like you saw with Zora, the second they want out, they can come out. Mama's getting close. So I might even, Again, feeling for the energy, should I preempt it and let her out before she asks? Or is there more value in this exchange by her asking and knowing that I will let her out? So you see, there's no right or wrong. It's just about you and your relationship with your horses and what's authentic to both of you. So this is hilarious because I let her out and she just stood there. She stood there for so long, I decided to get my camera out and start filming again. So again, very successful. She moved to the end of the pen here and I said, okay, I'll let you out. And then even with the gate wide open, she chose to stand there and just feel it with her body and feel her choices and feel the reality, which is brilliant. Love it. So they are also interested in their own emancipation and getting bigger and more resilient. And mama knows that she's gonna have to get on that trailer to get up to the ranch to be with everyone else. So she wants to um, practice so that this gets easier and easier for her. Hi, beauty. back to the configuration we were at before but I think I'm feeling like I'm done for today I don't want to play anymore so I'm gonna close that up not right yep because just like they get to choose I get to choose too yeah I get to choose when I'm done
And when I've had enough, right, Miss Kalia? Yeah. open gates. That was awesome. Good job you guys.